Both of these are 35 millimeter cameras. One is made from plastic and the other is made almost entirely out of metal. One is designed to go into the garbage when you're finished with it and the other may require its own insurance policy. One is made from the same material as the dashboard from a 1985 Toyota Corolla and the other is made from unobtainium, basically. One of these can be bought from your local grocery store for 15 or $20 and the other is handmade in Germany and cost thousands. These two film cameras are very different. No doubt for the first time in the history of the internet, we're gonna compare something really expensive to something not as expensive and see if the expensive thing's worth it. So let's put the expensive Leica boy away for a minute and get the disposable camera. So what are disposable cameras anyway? Back in the 1970s and 80s, back when we didn't care so much about the planet and couldn't be bothered to worry about all the problems associated with creating a bunch of e-waste, we created disposable film cam. You bought an entire camera at your local grocery store, you sent the entire film camera to the lab, or maybe back in those days, you even took it back to the same place that you bought it and got your pictures developed. I'm, I mean, I'm old enough to remember a world where grocery stores sometimes had their own film labs and in 45 minutes or an hour, or if you sent your pictures away a couple of days, the images would come back to you, usually in the form of prints, and they would ship the negatives back as well. But that was the end of it. That was the end of the camera. The camera was no longer a thing. It went off to some landfill somewhere. Talking a little bit about these Fuji disposable cameras, the camera body is plastic. The lenses are plastic. Everything on it is really cheap. Really cheap plastic. The cameras are also fixed focus. There's no need to fiddle with a focus ring or anything like that. No, no worrying about focus. Everything is just in focus all the time. There aren't shutter speeds to worry with. There aren't aperture settings to worry with. The camera only comes with one aperture. It's F10 and it's that really narrow aperture that makes sure everything is in focus. They're fixed focus, fixed aperture lenses. And basically all the electronics inside the camera, all they do is just pick an appropriate shutter speed for you. There is one thing that you have the ability to do on the front of the camera and that is trigger the flash. You can hear it powering up and we're just gonna go ahead and waste a shot. Boom, just like that right there. Um, nothing to it. You can see this little red light comes on when the flash is ready to go. And after you're finished with the shot, you just roll the advance knob forward. Nothing too fancy, nice and easy. And if you couldn't already tell, that is the benefit of these cameras, is there's really nothing to them. A, a 10 year old could go to Walmart, buy one of these off the shelf, and pretty quickly figure out exactly what they're doing with it. And I have this Fuji version of the disposable camera. It's not the only brand. Kodak makes one, Ilford makes one, and there are a number of other generic brands out there as well. So there are lots of different brands of disposable cameras that you can get your hands on, but probably the most popular one is this Fujifilm example. And one of the best things about these cameras is they come preloaded with a roll of Fujifilm, formerly Superior for 400 speed film, only because that was formerly discontinued, sadly. And I suspect subsequent Fujifilm disposable camera models, if we can continue to get them, will be stuffed with the new Fujifilm 400, which is the film stock we all assume is made by Kodak. And honestly, they do a pretty decent job. Here, take a look at some of these images as I'm talking, and like you can get an idea of what the images with one of these Fujifilm quick snap cameras look. In the past, at least, the colors were cool, maybe not exactly accurate, but maybe we expect that to change as they shift over to that Kodak film stock, which I think most folks agree is perhaps a little warmer. The lens on the camera isn't blindingly sharp, but for pretty small size prints, the images are gonna be okay. There are many optical defects and aberrations that come with these cameras. If you point them at the sun, you're gonna get a myriad of different issues, but that's to be expected with lenses made entirely out of plastic. But there is one thing you do get with a disposable camera, and you, this can't be understated, is you get that undeniable film aesthetic. They get on the internet, they get on Instagram, they get on TikTok, and they see these film images with all their wonderful film grain and the soft, subtle, pastel, washed out colors, and it's that film aesthetic that they're after. And this camera, even though it's cheap, even though it's made to be thrown in the trash, provides that in spades. And here's the thing about disposable cameras. They aren't the best little cameras ever made. And I think that goes without saying. I mean, they're very, very, very cheap. Uh, the build quality is absolutely minimal. Calling it build quality is a stretch. And some other great things about a disposable camera, you can obviously see they're very small, fit entirely inside the palm of your hand. You can slip one of these in your pocket. And if you lose one, um, somebody steals it, I don't know, you end up just misplacing it. It's not the end of the world. It's 15, 20 bucks, no big deal, just get another one. And it's just like the old cliche, the best camera in the world is the one you have with you. And and really no reason to not have one of these with you. I almost always have one stuck down in a pocket in my briefcase just in case. And now it's time for me to welcome you to the Leica M6. And what is there to say about the Leica M6 
that hasn't already been said. Actually don't answer that or else there wouldn't be much reason to continue watching this video. The Leica M6 introduced by Leica in Germany in 1984. And there were a number of variants of the Leica M6 and we're not gonna get bogged down in the details with that here. But for the most part, there are a number of things that all versions of the Leica M6 have in common. And the first and most obvious thing is their form factor. You can see it's got the old style Leica M6 rangefinder design. All of the versions of the camera are made in Germany. They all come with a built-in light meter, despite one being called the TTL and one not being called the TTL. They all feature Leica M mounts and they're all fully mechanical cameras. It means if the battery runs out or something goes wrong with the electronics inside the camera, the camera will still work properly, even though the light meter functionality won't. And at least to me, and I may be in the minority, but the Leica M6 is one of the most beautiful objects ever made. Everything about the design of this camera is intentional. The top and bottom plates of the original M6 are made from solid brass, and the camera has good crisp lines. And to avoid ultra sharp edges, there's this wonderful bevel that goes around every surface of the camera. And you can feel, you rub your finger around the edge of the camera, you can just feel that ever so soft bevel that keeps the camera from having a very sharp edge. And, and the attention to detail with the camera is just so great. I want you to take a look at the film Rewind Lever and what an interesting design this is. At the top, it has that same soft bevel going around the edge, and you can just see the tolerances are very tight. But this is what I think is really neat. When you open the winder, it snaps into place. I don't know if it's spring-loaded or there's a magnet in there that makes it clip into place, but it's just such a satisfying click. And that level of detail is present everywhere you look on the camera, from the softness which the lever wants to the crispness and the precision when you advance your film to the next frame. Everything just feels so sturdy and sure of itself. Right down to the shutter button. When you press the button to actuate the shutter, everything just feels crisp and good. And the shutter sound is soft, subdued, and very nice. Again, I could wax poetic about this camera for hours. To me, the Leica M6 is an end game film camera. It's a product designed to be used by a photographer for years and years and years. Everything on it is replaceable. Everything on it is repairable. True buy it for life purchase. And I'm gonna show you a few images that I've taken with my Leica M6 as well. Most of these were taken with the Voigtlander 35 millimeter 1.2 and you can see the images are delightfully sharp, although that has more to do with the lens than the camera. But it is worth noting that with that Leica M mount, there are just so many wonderful lenses out there, and some of which can be obtained for less money than you think. You don't just have to stay in the Leica portfolio to find wonderful lenses. These cameras have been making world-class images since their introduction in 1984. So how do we go about comparing these two? They're both plainly very different beasts. In terms of cost, they're very different. In terms of build quality, they're very different, but there are a few notable ways in which they're actually the same. They're both effectively a dark place to put a frame of 35 millimeter film. And you can see now that I've started to mix and match some images here, the images from both systems actually look pretty great. Both of which provide that film look that most photographers who are thinking about jumping back into film are after in the first place. And I guess what I would say at this point in the video is if that's all you're after, that's all you want is to get that film look. Maybe you do try to save a little money and find a cheaper entry point to film photography. It's very easy for us when we get into film photography to watch videos by myself and lots of other film photographers and think the very next thing that we need to do is run out and buy an expensive film camera. And they're really great. And let's make no mistake about it, there are capabilities that this camera has that this point and shoot camera just can't even come close to. This camera shoots f10. The lens that I've got on this camera here shoots f1.2. I mean, they're in another stratosphere in terms of capabilities. But for most folks, in most situations, you're gonna get images from a little disposable camera that you're gonna be perfectly happy with, and it's gonna give you exactly the look that you want. And as it relates to money, only you are capable of making that determination about what that money means to you. For some folks, the $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 entry point of an M6 is no big deal. That's a rounding error on their yearly taxes. That's not me. Um, I have plenty of money and I do just fine, but it was a pretty significant outlay of cash for me. I did have to stretch just a little bit. And there's some folks that shouldn't even think about buying a Leica M6. Are you filling your 401k? Are you making that Roth contribution every year? I'm not Dave Ramsey here trying to tell you what to do with your money, but those are some things I was thinking about when I was thinking about whether folks should be buying M6s or not. But it is a really expensive thing, at least to me. And to be sure, a Leica M6 will not make you a better photographer if you don't get out and shoot it. 
Um, there is some fiddliness and some cumbersomeness that comes along with shooting a camera like this. This camera, basically you decide whether you want to use the flash or not, and you push a button. The Leica M6, you can see there are a number of things that you're going to need to control. For many folks that get into film photography, that's awesome. And if you stick with it and you actually use the camera, it will teach you photography. But straight out the gate, if it's too cumbersome, if it's too much of a hassle, you're not going to shoot the camera. So you need to make sure that you're interested in the workflow to begin with. And even in the world of the Leica M6, there are cameras out there who are, there are cameras out there that are going to do exactly the same thing with the same capabilities of the M6 uh, that can get it done for a lot less money. There are even wonderful rangefinder options. There are even wonderful rangefinder options out there. The Contax G1 does everything the Leica M6 does, and it's autofocus, and it's about one sixth, one seventh the money. Nikon F100, it's another camera I own and love. Wonderful SLR camera. For a couple hundred bucks, you're gonna have way more capabilities than the Leica M6, and it's gonna provide awesome images in a wonderful lens ecosystem from Nikon. So even if you want a more premium camera with more features, um, there are options out there that just make more sense. But buying a Leica M6 is not a rational purchase. Let's make that perfectly clear right now. You're not buying the Leica M6 because it makes great financial sense. You're buying it because you love it. And with all that being said, there are some folks out there that the Leica M6 is just naturally going to appeal to, me being one of those. Fortunately for me, I really don't have other expensive hobbies. There's no hunting, there's no fishing, there's no bass boats, there's no side-by-sides, there's no four-wheelers, and there are also no fancy cars. I really live, in many ways, a pretty basic life. I get most of my enjoyment through things like running, hiking, spending time with my family, and taking pictures. Those are really my big things. Makes it very easy for me to justify splurging on a nice camera like the M6. There are many areas in my life where I can't afford to have the very best. I can't have the best car. I can't have the best house. I can't have the best watch. I can't have the best suit. But when it comes to a camera, this is one area where I actually can afford to have the very best. And that's pretty satisfying. I'll tell you this about owning the Leica M6. I have a computer, it's where I do most of my work, I play my video games, and I have a shelf that sits beside my computer. And on that shelf I have lots of different cameras and lots of different trinkets, kind of curios there, um, but there's always one thing that I pull off the shelf and just hold sometimes, I just fiddle with it. And that's my M6. The cold metal, the tight tolerances, the smooth edges, all the wonderful, all the wonderful attributes about this camera. It's just a nice thing to hold. It's a nice thing to own. And this, is, and this is the point in the video where I'm gonna make the final comparison. Uh, is the Laka M6 worth it for most people? And the answer is going to be a resounding no. Uh, most people should click off this video, they should go to their local Walmart and buy a Fujifilm disposable camera and figure out whether they like film to begin with or maybe look another place. But there are some folks out there that this overpriced hunk of metal from Germany is gonna appeal to. Now I'm one of them. I'm always buying and selling and trading my cameras and all my different gear. Um, but there's one camera that I don't ever think about selling. And it's this one. This camera will probably be with me for the rest of my life. And when I die, hopefully it can be handed down to my kids. And I have, and I have no doubt that at that point, this camera will still be functioning. There will still be people out there servicing them. And my son or my daughter, if they want to take this camera out and take pictures the same way that I did, they'll be able to. But if you want to see me take my Leica M6 out and shoot a few images with it, I took it out with a roll of Luminar 100 on a wonderful fall Kentucky day when the leaves had just turned. Take a look at this video before you go. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.